Hey, my name is Julian and welcome to MemberScript 110, also known as Tooltips for Webflow. So in essence, all this is, is it's the Tippy JS library, which is a very popular JavaScript library for tooltips that has been converted into an attribute based solution for Webflow with a whole bunch of different attributes that you can choose from in order to make your tooltip work for you. So I'm gonna walk you through some of those options and then explain to you how to use them. So first things first, using them is super easy. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is get the MemberScript for 110. If you're watching this on the member, member stack site, then the code should be in the code tab on the page. If you're watching this from YouTube, then click the link in the description to go to the member stack site. So as you can see here, we have the script for member script 110, simply copy it in and paste it in wherever your tooltips are going to be. You could put them in an embed, or you could put them in the site wide code, you could put them in the page code, whatever it is that you want to do. Just always it's best practice to try to not load it when it's not needed. So you probably shouldn't put it site wide if you're not going to be using it on every single page. Anyways, with that being said, Add in that code and then all you need to do is add attributes to whatever it is that you want to trigger the tooltip. So as we can see here, we have these placement attributes and if I hover over this one, as you can see, it shows up on the right, this one shows up on the left, this one shows up on the top, this one shows up on the bottom. And that is completely controlled by this attribute. As you can see, these buttons have only one attribute and every single tooltip needs a placement attribute. So if it doesn't have a placement attribute, it's not going to work. This is going to determine whether it's going to show up to the right, to the left, to the top, to the bottom, or a custom placement attribute. So you can add ms-code-tooltip-placement equals and then any one of these. So top, top start, top end, right, right start, so on and so forth. You can read these and as you can see, for example, what top start is going to do is it's going to make it start at the top towards, in this case, the left side of the button. So that is what that's going to do. Then moving down animation. So these you use in combination with placement attributes. And that also is true for the rest of these attributes. So here, as we can see in Webflow, this one has MS code tooltip, right? And then we have this MS code tooltip animation equals fade. So this is the default, as we can see here. This one is shift away. So as we can see, it's shifting away from the button. This is shift towards, which means it's shifting towards the button. And this is perspective, which I don't know how to explain, but you can see it here. It's pretty cool. Then we have theme. So again, in this case, the default theme is dark. So this attribute is gonna keep it dark. And this one here is light. So if you add this, the tooltip is going to have a light theme. Then we have max width, and this is something that you're probably gonna to wanna to use if you have a lot of text. So this one, as we can see right here, it's longer, and so we need to set a maximum width because otherwise it would be way too long and it would just go off the page. Then we have delay, and delay allows you to set the delay for it to pop in and to pop out. So if I just set the attribute value to 500, for example, it's gonna make both the in and the out 500. If we do this square bracket 0 comma 500, it's going to come in immediately and then it's going to wait to leave for half a second. Then this is going to make it wait to come in for half a second, but it'll leave immediately. Then we have duration, which follows the same thing with one number or multiple numbers. And what that does is it sets the duration of the animation. So as we can see here, this one is set to 0 500. If I hover over it, it just pops right in and then it fades out, just like that. Same thing in reverse, this one fades in, pops out, fades in, pops out. So you can add that attribute if you want it. Then what we have is this interactive attribute. So MS code tooltip interactive equals in this case true. And what that's gonna do is this, a normal tooltip will work like this. When you're hovered over the element, it'll show up. Then if you try to hover over the tooltip, it won't. But this will allow you to hover over the tooltip, copy text, or if you're using HTML in your tooltip, then click buttons, so on and so forth. I'll show you that attribute in just a second. Next one is very simple. It is arrow. And this just determines, as you can see here, there's an arrow that shows up on the side. And this one, there isn't. So if you don't want the arrow, that attribute will allow you to remove it. 
Then we have some trigger attributes. So by default, it is mouse enter. As you can see here, it triggers when the mouse enters the object. And then this one, we have MS code tooltip trigger equals click. So hovering over it does nothing, as you can see. Clicking it makes it pop up. And clicking something else makes it go away. Then we have MS code tooltip trigger equals focus. And this one, if it's on a button, it will behave similar to mouse enter. Or sorry, no, it'll behave similar to click. But usually this would be something you would use on form inputs. That way, even if you don't hover over the form input, you instead click tab, it's gonna show up when the form input is focused. Then we have hide on click. So as we can see here, false, even if I'm clicking the button, if you can't tell I'm clicking the button, the tooltip stays away or stays up. This one, if I click the button, it goes away. So if that's what you want, you can add that. Then we have follow cursor, which is pretty straightforward. As we can see here, this is following my cursor if it's set to true. If it's set to horizontal, it'll only follow it horizontally. If it's set to vertical, it'll only follow it vertically, as you can see. And if it's set to initial, it's just gonna set the placement of it to be wherever the mouse entered. So let's say enter from the bottom right corner, it'll be there. Let's say enter from the left middle, it'll be there. Bottom middle, it'll be there. Hopefully that makes sense. Offset allows you to set the placement offset on it, again, in an array of two numbers, and these are set in pixels. So this one right here is set to minus 100 x-axis, 100 y-axis. So there we go. Then here are just a couple of other examples so you can see what it looks like. This usually you would want to do if, for example, you've had some element beside it that just didn't make the tooltip work. Z index allows you to set the Z index. So for example, if your tooltip is getting stuck hiding behind something, you can increase the Z index with the Z index attribute. Then we have allow HTML. So what this will do is if you put HTML in your attribute value, and I will show you that right now, if we scroll down to allow HTML. So as we can see here, this has MS code tooltip right and MS code tooltip allow HTML, which in this case is set to false. And what that's gonna look like is this. I put HTML in the attribute value, as we can see here again, and since it's set to false, it just won't do anything. But if it's set to true, and you put the same thing, as you can see, it's actually going to render as a header. You could do this with text, with buttons, with images, whatever it is that you want. My tip to you is build something inside of Webflow. So let's say I was to build this box right here, and then inspect that, I could then get that element, click edit as HTML, copy the HTML, paste it into the attribute value, and then that's what's gonna show up inside my tooltip. So this one allows you to do some pretty cool things. And finally, we have the touch attribute. So this just determines whether or not it's going to show up on a mobile device when that element is clicked. So I can't show you this because I'm on a computer, but you get the point nonetheless. And that is it. Those are all of the attributes. I hope this helped. If you have any questions, let me know in the member stack 2.0 Slack in the member scripts chat channel. I will talk to you soon and have a great day. Bye.